everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters, and I am excited. I get to share with you today the brand new 16 scale M4A3 EH Sherman, the EZ8 late World War II slash Korean War kit. So this is my new kit right here. I read so many comments when the, uh, the first Sherman that I produced came out, and people were saying, hey, why don't you do one that has the later tracks on it, or even the Korean War one? And since it's not a huge difference to change it up right there, I decided to go ahead and have that one done. Now, the benefit of this kit is we still have all of the actual regular World War II parts from my original kit. We didn't take those parts out. They're actually still included inside the kit. The main difference on this is you're going to get the new T-80 tracks. You're going to get a new figure. This kit does not include... The, uh, the tank commander figure, which we do have available separately if you still want one of those. This one has a new soldier figure inside here, and he's wearing the M1943 uniform. So, of course, you can put him in late World War II, and that uniform was used all the way up until 1952 in Korea. So you can also put him in the Korean War type thing, as you see here with the, uh, the Rice's Red Devils. Love that artwork right there. And I said, oh, we got to definitely have to do this one here. So what I'm going to do today is I am going to show you inside this kit. I'm going to show you all the new parts that differ from the original one. And like I was saying, this is a late World War II slash Korea. So there are markings to do three different Korean War versions and two different World War II versions in there. So you have the option. You can mix and match different parts from the original kit that are still inside here that if you want to make a little bit kind of like a hodgepodge of stuff, you have the ability to do it with this kit here. So, I am super excited to share this with you, so, let's get started! Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you all of the new sprues that are in this kit. These are the sprues that were not in the original kit, and this is what differs between this and the early version uh, that came out last year. And what you're looking at right here is the first part of the tracks. And what I'll do before I actually show you those up close is to actually show you a little section of the track that I built up to show you how flexible it is. Got the individual guide horns there, the pads, and of course the uh, the chevrons on the bottom here. And you can see how nice and workable these tracks are. I'm going to put that to the side for a minute and actually show you the actual track sprue. And you can see here we've got two halves of it here. So here are the chevrons. All of these need to be cut out. And then these are the bottom pads where the actual road wheels will ride on. And up on top here and the side in here are all slide molded with the, uh, the hollowed out horn with the little hole drilled out on the top there. That's why all those needed to be slide molded. And we have our spare tracks right here on the side that are already assembled. And this little piece right here, this is going to come in very, very handy to help you assemble these tracks. So obviously you're going to get multiple uh, these tracks in the kit. So each time you get one, you put these together and I'll show you how they all stack up to really make the tracks go together a lot, lot easier than without this little, this little jig here. So you can see here, the other side is just pins and holes, just like that. Very simple. And we'll push this off to the side. And here is the other sprue that makes up the track. And these are the bars that go inside. So basically, it's a stacking process. You can see the sides are all slide molded here with the little hollowed out pins. So you'll basically stack that here. You put the one pad on the bottom in between the two pins. And then you put the, uh, the chevron on top of that. And then you'll get, you'll get the working track, as you see right here. But like I said, I'm going to actually build up a couple of sets in front of you right there or i should say a couple of sets a couple of pieces of track to show you how it all goes together but we'll do that in a minute after i show you the rest of the sprues here the next major difference is going to be this sprue right here this has a lot of the differences on it so here are the extra bars that go on the back of the engine deck because they had reinforced that up a little bit and also we have this uh metal diffuser back here and that is all armored on the later version. And that parts all make up that, that piece. And there's plus some other little tiny pieces that will vary on the kit. Keep in mind too, I, I wanted this to be able to be done as a 
not a, necessarily a two in one, but you can build all of the other parts the same. So this later armored versions inside, but also remember too, the regular one is inside for the earlier version of the Sherman. So you can build an earlier type Sherman, but still have these T80 tracks on it right here, which um, there's some famous photos. In fact, I'm gonna show you a photo right now this photo uh, had lots of people when the original kit came out saying, man, I really like to do this one. Hopefully we can get some T-80 tracks. And that is one of the reasons why we did it like this. So you can build either the late World War II or, of course, the Korean War one. And finally, the other sprue that I want to show you. This one actually has a little bit of sentimental meaning to me too, but I'll talk about that in a minute. This is the figure that is going to be included inside this kit. This this figure will also be available separately too. Uh, and it will be available at the same time as the Sherman, but it is included inside the uh, the new kit. Now this is a, a US infantry soldier with an M1943 uniform on. And the reason we went with this is because the M1943 uniform can be used for World War II because they were issued in uh, 43. And actually the uniform didn't change at all until I believe it is 1952. So the beginning parts of the Korean War, they were using the, the World War II uniforms. I mean, they had a lot of them left over, so they decided to use them for that. So that is the significance of this, feat, of this figure because you can use it for World War II or for Korea, uh, for the earlier parts of Korea. Now, the other significant part of this figure is the fact that uh, you may have mentioned, if you've watched this uh, channel for a while, my grandfather was with the 1st Infantry Division in World War II, fought from Normandy, uh, through the breakout, uh, through the Hurtigan Forest, on into Aachen, and many, many other battles here. I've talked about him in the past. And I wanted to do a little tribute for him. So I contacted Jason, and he was kind enough to take a photo that I had of my grandfather from World War II. It's actually before he actually was involved in the war. He had just uh, just been uh, brought in. And so he still has a smile on his face. Uh, the war hadn't, hadn't taken the toll on him yet. And he was kind enough to sculpt the, the figure based on my grandfather. And I only had one picture of him from that time period. So it's... Uh, I think he did a wonderful job on it here. So now I'm going to show you the, the actual figure and all of its detail. So I'm starting off with the face here. So you see we've got the, the face, we've got the canteen, there's the back of the head. We've got a beautiful grand right there, multiple pieces. We've got the individual hands, all of the ammo pouches and then the uniform itself. Now I have one of these built up. I don't have it painted yet but I do have it built up so I can show you. We also have the rest of the grand parts right here. And a helmet, of course. And of course, the shoes, which have separate soles right there. And I'll just let you look in here and see the detail on the figure. Just like that. And then one more quick shot of the face. Very, very nicely done. So, like I said, this, this figure will be included uh, on this limited edition kit on the, for the uh, late World War II slash Korea War one. But this figure is also available separately. So if you want to add it to the, uh, the other Sherman or a diorama or whatever you're working on, we will have these available as well. And now that you saw all the parts, here is what one of those figures looks like all painted up. Uh, I've just sprayed gray primer on it for right now, just to give you an idea of what it's going to look like. Just like that. And like I said, this figure will be available separately, and it's also included inside the kit. Now I am going to show you how the track links go together on this kit. And so if you remember on the, the track sprue I showed you a little while ago, we had the jig. And this is what it looks like when six of those are glued together. That is going to help out a lot. You're going to have your left and right side pads. And they only fit one way inside this jig here. So once you set it up like this, this is only going to fit on this side. And it will not fit on the other side because the chevron goes the different direction. 
So very simply, you're going to get all the parts cut off. There is going to be a fair amount of parts on this uh, set of tracks, more so than the T66. Uh, but because of the way they look and the way they uh, react, it's uh, necessary, but it's going to get some really nice detail for you. And it's actually not very hard to put them together. It's just a matter of cutting them all off and cleaning them up. So this is how it is. You're going to put the left and right track pads on each side just like this drop those into place they lock into the little little grips on the bottom down there just like this and you can kind of knock them out pretty quickly we're just going to do a couple right here just to kind of show you how it's going to be next up we are going to take our bars and the bars are going to go in between each one of the tracks and remember there are two little bolts up on the top of each one of these tracks and in real life that is how they attach them so you want to make sure that is facing up when you go to put these together because that bolt should be facing up and not down on the track then it's just a matter of dropping them into place in between the uh, the different sections there and with the camera in the way it's kind of hard to see as well but there we go like that and then once you get that done take a little bit of your uh, liquid cement and you can see we've got the little little holes there in the middle the little for where the pins go and we're just going to put a little bit of cement on each one of those and if you look at the back side of the pad the top part where the actual wheels ride on it's smooth and it's just a matter of dropping that into place, putting a little pressure on it. This one had a little bit too much time probably to set up already. We want it to still be wet. Drop another one of those on here on this side. And like I said, put a little pressure on there to give it a little bit of time to, uh, to set up. And that is all there is to it other than the guide horn. So once all of that will get set up, little bit of cement on the guide horn and you would just drop that right into place just like that that's it i'm going to show you here um, you see how these just lock into place on this guide horn because that's how i built these i just assembled them right on here and just assembly line just make sure you got piles like i do here of each one of the sides and just start laying them in dropping the uh, the bars in and dropping the pads on top of that and it probably took me a grand total with cutting them out and cleaning them up it probably took a grand total of about about two hours to assemble one set of track but that's mostly just cutting them out i did it while i was watching the the mandalorian not too long ago and just cleaning them up as i went and then i actually went and assembled them here at the store so the assembly part took took virtually nothing at all so that's how easy and simple it is to build up the new t80 tracks i know there are definitely more parts than the t66 tracks but uh that's about the only way you're going to be able to get them to do that and still have all that detail and be fully workable as i showed you earlier here we are here are the new instructions that come with this kit as well this is ahq 004 obviously the picture has changed a little bit on the front and i'm just going to point out just a, a couple quick things on we've got a new introduction here breakdown of the parts like we normally do uh there was a small little error in the original instructions and most people found out and were able to figure it out really easily on their own but we had left off these r5 or excuse me r6 and r7 parts it is now called out in the instructions like it is properly supposed to be and also the pipe right here that gets uh, mounted into place there was a little bit of a problem with the pin on the original kit that you just had to trim one of the pins off but that has also been corrected on this kit as well uh, we hear everything that you guys tell us about that and that was all taken care of and fixed and then of course differently in the instructions here will be how you put the tracks together which i just showed you a few minutes ago and and then of course how to put the other different armored version on but keep in mind i have included all of the original parts as well so if you want to create a a mixture where you have a little bit of some of the earlier parts but still have the t80 tracks on it you can do that so we wanted to give you the the option to create one the way you want so when you look at the call outs right here step seven here it's saying one two three four and what that means is if you want to build tank one two three or four in the uh, the profiles in the back that's what you'd want to use this one if you want to do number five like that you will use the older type version of the uh i guess it's a, like it's an air diffuser that's coming out of the back the way it exhausts out now um 
As we go through here, we'll kind of show you the engine deck builds up very similar until you get to a little bit further ahead here. And this is where you start putting on the later war into Korea type braces on there, which once again, you don't have to put on. If you want to build either two or three, you'd put those braces on. If not, you can leave them off and make it a regular World War II version. And then that's that's true with the call box on the back too. That's more of a Korean War type thing, but uh, you'll see that as well. And then the instructions, I'm gonna go through these kind of quickly because it's very similar. I wanted to get to this part right here. So as you see here, the very first one is Rice's Red Devils. It is built up right here with the red face on it. And here's the tiger version of it, the one with the tiger mouth on it and the eyes gone onto it. It's also got a big, big American star on the rear engine deck. And then we have this one here. This is Korea 1951. And this one right here, this jumps back to World War II. So this version with the decals on it is for the 4th Armored Division in Luxembourg, January of 45. And finally, we have the uh, HQ Company of 12th Armored Division in France, March of 45 right here. So as you can see right here, and it also has the big American star on the back. And then in the back here, like we usually do, we give it a little tease of things coming. So I can tell you right now, these first two kits are already in production right now. And I'll let you know a little, little tiny secret hint about them. Neither one of them are Shermans. So uh, I'm not going to give any more away than that, but uh, neither one of these next two kits coming out are a Sherman. And these, these are still a, a ways off right now. So we won't talk about those right now, but that gives you a general idea of the instructions and what to expect inside the new late war slash Korean War HVSS Sherman. And lastly, the kit still comes with a metal barrel, just like the original version. It has the photo etch for the grill up in the front, as well as copper wire for the tow cables. And now that you guys have seen the new parts, the instructions, the decals, metal barrel, all that other kind of stuff, of course the box, the profiles, I've got a couple of little surprises here for you. And first of all, I have one of the kits built up. I've got it all built, paint and weathered, as you can see here. Uh, it looks really, really cool with the, uh, the red devil face on the front. Now, because I had some time to build that up, that's one of the reasons I haven't had a heck of a lot of uh, other videos out, and that is because I've been taking my time and working on this kit. I do have a couple of little extras on here. Now, I have some value gear here on the side that uh, f looks great on there. And what I did is I took a little piece of plastic bar and made it into a like a grab handle type big one going across and glued that onto the side. That's not part of the kit, neither is any of these bags. And I also put some boxes and things like that and tied them onto the rear deck. Uh, other than that, everything is right out of the kit as you would expect it. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a turntable big enough for this, but uh, I can show you kind of some pictures around the entire vehicle. And um, funny little story too, I showed my oldest son the kit once I was all built up with it. And he said, what was the significance of the uh, the Red Devil face on the front here? And I said, well, during the Korean War, uh, the, the enemy was rather superstitious, they said, of devils and tigers and things like that. And it was used to scare them. And without batting an eye, his comment was, uh, the tank alone didn't scare them. And I had to think about it. I go, yeah, I guess you're right. Well, I'd be pretty afraid just of the tank coming at me. Never mind a tank with a, uh, a cartoon devil face on the front. But uh, just a little story with that. The other little surprise that I wanted to talk to you guys about is the fact that this kit is available right now. This kit is in my warehouse in here in the United States. And if you go on our website, andyshhq.com, you can actually order it right now and it'll be sent out to you uh, immediately on that. So we did it a little different this time. We didn't want to do a pre-order. We wanted to actually get them in the door. And actually, I just noticed that that was twisted unevenly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we wanted to get them in the door and have them ready for you guys. So we have them in stock right now. 
This is a limited edition kit. We didn't produce as many of these as we did the normal Sherman, which actually the, the normal Sherman now is actually sold out distribution wise worldwide. So there's a lot of countries that don't have any of the other ones available, but that was one of the other reasons that we wanted to make this a, for lack of a better term, two in one kit. So you can build it either as the Korean War or the late World War II. So keep that in mind that if you still wanna do a World War II one, you have all the options available to do it on this particular kit here. Well, there you go, guys. There is a look at the brand new Andy's Hobby Headquarters 16 scale M4A3 E8 Sherman, the late World War II slash Korea. And I'm very, very proud of this one. I think it came out wonderful. Uh, just like the original Sherman, it goes together beautifully and is quite the presentation piece once you get this actually done and on display. Remember, it does include the M1943 uniform soldier inside of it now. And also that soldier is available separately that if you want to add it to another diorama or whatever you're doing on that, that is also available separately. And also you can still pick up the tank commander figure that if you want one for this particular uh, Sherman, we still have that as available as well. So remember, these are available right now. They will be available around the world very, very soon, if not uh, close to the same date that I'm doing this video here. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up down there. And if you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you'll be notified every time a new video comes out. And keep in mind, I will be making some big announcements over the next couple of months. We have a brand new 16 scale American AFE World War II and a British AFE World War II. And remember, both of them are not Shermans. So uh, keep that in mind as we go forward on that. Very excited to bring those out to you guys. Uh, but that will be sometime in summer when we make the big announcement on those. So I want to take this opportunity to thank you as always for watching. And please stay tuned because I have many more videos coming.